Hi everyone, welcome back to the cabin. It's Ian from Off Cove with Penny Glen Homestead. So hi to everybody. Listen, before I start, I'm just turning this coffee machine on. So you might hear a bit of noise with my co pod coffee machine going. It's just, it's early in the morning, it's one o'clock in the morning. I'm running late this week doing a video. It's actually Sunday morning, 1 a.m. And the video should be going out live when you watch it now, which is about 12 o'clock in the afternoon. So listen, big hi to everybody. Um, I've not done a lot at the cabin this week. I've said that for the last few weeks and it's true I've not. Each time I've done a video. The reason why is I've had issues with my stomach again and my legs. I'll just quickly tell you what happened. I went in hospital and I had a procedure on my spine. And my leg went, it went wrong the procedure. My leg went totally dead. I like, paralysed in my leg for about oh, five or six hours. So they kept me in overnight and I came home. So since I've come home, I've been having a lot, a lot of problems with my legs. A lot of problems where they just start wobbling or drop or I'm in pain with them and then I'm also having stomach problems still do you know what? I'm still waiting for that to have the camera done right that's up and down <laughs> which I'm not looking forward to and it's been three and a half years now that I waited for that on NHS now you can't beat the NHS <laughs> so so I've had a bit of a rough week to be honest with you um, so to be honest, again, like I said, to be honest, I've not done a lot, like I've said. So what I thought I'd do is I thought I'd tell you some funny stories this week about things that has happened to me in the past. And I've got some stuff, interesting things to tell you, actually. Right, first of all, I wanted to tell you about my brother-in-law, Mark. Now, if he's watching this, hi, Mark. I've not spoken to you for such a long time. And he might leave a comment in the comment section below saying hi to me and hi to all you as well. He's a really nice bloke, Mark. My brother-in-law, really nice, we were like brothers, we were really close, he were nice to me. And I'll be honest with you, when I got involved with my wife's family, uh, Mark and Marie, husband and wife job, then uh, Tracy's brother Mark, then uh, he made me feel so, so welcome and so did Marie into the family. And, and they, were, uh, they were the best ones to me, to be honest with you, they were, they were brilliant. They were really kind and I, I do thank you tremendously for that, I really do. Now. The funny things I'm going to tell you, right? We went, it was summertime, and we went to an area called Langsit, right? Uh, and it's like a wooded area. And we went there, and there was a big pond, like a big pool, like a river. There was like, oh, how can I put it? There were waterfalls that were right at the back that you couldn't see unless you walked around. And then the waterfall comes down, obviously, and eventually around a couple of corners, then I'm just staring this. Around a couple of corners, you come to a big pool. Anyway, everyone fights for this pool because they like to swim in it, right? So we got there early. So it was Mark who went and Marie, their two kids, me and Tracy. Now Tracy is my wife, right? So we, so we got there, right? So me and Mark's there taking our trousers down our shirts. We've got our little trunks on already. So we're there going in water swimming away we were swimming away one to one side and to back then sitting in the water because it was sunny it was a sunny day so the water were warm ducking our heads under all that accidentally drinking the water because it's fresh water and everything so we did this for hours we loved it right so then mark and marie uh tracy and marie were kicking off that they wanted to go for a walk with kids right so me and mark got out tiled our sems off got dressed Right, so we started walking off towards all of us walked off towards the uh, waterfall. Anyway, we went around a couple of bends, and I kid you not, I kid you not, in the middle of the river. Bear in mind, we were lower down in the river in the pond. In the river were a dead sheep, and it were decomposing, or it were monkey. And when I showed Mark, I went, "Look at this." He just could not stop laughing because he knew we were in that water and it was contaminated. It was just one of them things, but it's funny it happened to us, to be honest, right? So when we got to the waterfall, we headed off round the side of it. And when we're going round, to be honest with you, there were sheep up at the top of this hill. There were a big, like, rock face hill. And there were sheep up at the top. Anyway, this young sheep had got, started coming down the rocks and got stuck. So I started climbing up these rocks and it was dangerous. Looking back, I shouldn't, well, I'm glad I did it, but you know what I mean about being dangerous when I say I wish I hadn't done it. 
But I got up and I said, grab all this sheep, put it on my shoulder a little bit and hold it. And to be fair, it was very still. And I got it up top to its mother and I, I pushed it over and it went to its mother and it ran off. And I felt great, right? This what I'm going to tell you is a true bit, right? So I come down and I said to Mark, I said, Mark, how old did he have to be sheep before he breed with them? He looked at me, he goes, 16. I go, sod off. <laughs> 16 I could have killed him I walked right into that one did I so then we carried on round and we started walking to this like little pool area and stuff and we used to sit in the we sat in the grass and had a picnic and stuff anyway there was another little pool right so we're in the pool there was Mark me and Natty now Natty is Mark's son nice lad Natty and the daughter Estelle lovely lass as well right so us three are in water, right? So Natty, this is a true story, right? Natty picked a little pebble up in the water and threw it near his dad, Mark, and it just hit him, like, to the side to him, right? And it splashed. Anyway, Mark picked a, st a little stone up. This is true, this. He picked a little stone up. He goes, I'm telling you, Natty, I've had enough of this, right? You stop throwing stones because it's dangerous. I can throw stones. I can throw them. And he literally just went, I did look. He just threw this stone just to get rid of the stone out of his hand. He threw it and I swear to God, it hit me right on my elbow. But you know that tender bit on your elbow? It hit me there. I went, ah! We couldn't stop laughing, honestly. It was just unbelievable that it hit me. It was sad to love. But I'm going to tell you another story about my heart that's so funny, right? It was a school day, right? And me and Tracy came round. And we sat in house with Bree, and Bree says, look, our Natty's not so good, and I've told him we can have day off. But if Mark knows he's got day off, he'll kick off and he'll drag him to school, right? So I went, right. So she says, if he comes down, you've got to promise me he won't say out, Ian, because it'll cause trouble. I went, right. I said, well, where's now? Well, he's up in, bedroom, in his bedroom hiding. I went, right, all right then. So next minute, Mark shouted us up to look at someone. I don't know what it was. So me and Tracy and Marie went upstairs, right? And we were talking away and I went into Natty's bedroom. And what happened is, when I went in Natty's bedroom, where the door opened, Natty was stood behind the door where the wall was so you couldn't see him, right? So I was looking out the window, right? Mark comes in, he said, do you know something, Ian? This is absolutely true. He says, do you know something? He says, I know everything that goes off in this house. I went, right, Mark? He says, no. He says, nothing gets past me. True story. He literally said this. Nothing gets past me. I know everything. He says, I'll rule the roost here, you know. I went, right, all right, then, Mark. So when he went out, Natty opened the door and he was kinking his head laughing behind the door. Absolute true story. One of their priceless moments. And this other time, right, Natty said to him, I don't want carpet down on my floor, Dad, in my bedroom. Can I have a wooden floor? <laughs> right, now, I've, I've jumped the story a bit here. The story was that Mark had decorated all Natty's bedroom. Right? He made a really good job. He decorated, looked nice. But he had the old carpet down. And he'd got some new bump beds, right? So, Natty says, Dad, I don't want carpet can have wooden floor. Now downstairs he fitted a laminate floor, which actually we both fitted, actually truthfully, me and Mark both fitted that, right? So he says, Dad, I don't want a carpet. So he says, right, okay. Anyway, right. Cut a long story short, two days later Marie rings me. She says, Ian, just come round and talk to Mark, you won't believe what he's doing. <laughs> right, this is another true story. I went round, she says, get upstairs. So I went upstairs and Mark was actually in Natty's bedroom painting. What he'd done is he took the carpet up and there, were, there was like crappy floorboards down, right? He only got fence paint, fence paint, not varnish, fence paint and he was painting <laughs> all the floorboards with fence paint. He stunk the house out for days and days and days. Natty was going high on the night. They had to have bedroom windows. Oh, it's so funny, honestly. The things Mark's done are unbelievable, honestly. 
So listen, that's the stories about Mark. Mark, if you're watching this, hopefully I've jogged your memory with these stories and I hope I've not offended you by telling it telling everybody these stories I don't mean no malice it was just funny times that we had together and I had a great time with you and I miss you tremendously if you are watching I know I've just said it but leave a note mark just so we know that you watched it now go tell you some other stuff right my brother let me just have a sup of this coffee because I tell you something it, it's absolutely freezing this last few well it's rained all week today we've had a bit of sun but it's rained as well but it's been ice cold on the night. Oh God, it's cold tonight and all to be honest with you. It's really cold. So I just let me have a swig of this. Mmm. That's nice. Right. Now, last week's video I did a product review, right? And it's a wildlife camera slash security camera. So I've put it up in my woodland and it's been picking a few things up, some deer walking past and stuff, so I might add them in the next few videos. Now, what I was going to tell you was, my brother uh, and the rest of the family live, at, live in, the old, in the family home that was my mother's who's passed away quite a few years ago. So he's decided he's going through the house and just getting rid of everything, because what it is, my mother was a hoarder and her mother, my grandma, she was a hoarder. My uncle Harold was a hoarder. Eileen, my cousin, was a hoarder. I'm a hoarder. I'm a really bad hoarder. I admit it. I'm a, I am a bad hoarder. My sister Jewel is a hoarder. It runs in the family. Apparently it can be genetic of being a hoarder. It's supposed to be true that, right? So my sister, my other sister Sarah, she's a bit of a hoarder to be honest. She's not, she, she always puts it down to sentimental, but she is, she's a hoarder of everything, our Sarah. So, so my brother, he's a hoarder, but he's fighting it, right? I always say that. Because I've always said to him, look, just, just submit to it and just say, look, I'm a hoarder, I'm a professional hoarder, and I'm proud of it. That's what I say about myself, right? I can't help being a hoarder, so you just go, go with it, don't you? So he's decided he's finally going to go through everything in the house and just get rid of everything. So he's put a gunner skip in front of the house. Anyway, he's on the third skip in it. The stuff my mum's hoarded over the years is unbelievable. So, the reason I'm telling you this, there's some stuff that he's got for me. Now, our Sarah, she thinks it's Christmas. He's been giving loads of stuff to our Sarah, who lives around the corner, and he's been giving her loads and loads of stuff, so she thinks it's Christmas. So she's throwing all her stuff out for the stuff coming because my mum only bought top quality stuff right so some of the stuff that Stuart's got for me he saved me because I'm a sentimental person I say really like if there's towels and things like that or clothes she loves things like that and bedding and all that well I like old stuff and sentimental stuff I'm very much that way be I would rather not have loads of stuff and just have a few things that are old that's precious to the family if that makes sense so some of the stuff I've got that he's, gave, that he's going to post up for me is my granddad, right, he used to shave every day but back in the old, old days it was a very, very basic shaver, really like dangerous shaver in a way and he's got the tin where the shaver, official tin that the shaver goes in that was my granddad so he saved me that, so I'm over the moon at that because I never met my granddad or my grandma. My grandma held me when I was a baby and then not long after she passed away, but my granddad died when I, before I was born. So he's also got me, uh, my, dad, my granddad used to smoke and he's got me his bucketing with some cigarettes that's been rolled that he's rolled himself, right, my granddad. And to me, that'll be amazing. I am so much looking forward to that. You might laugh, but to me, that's nice because it's like old stuff that my granddad's that mean everything, if you know what I mean. And then also, my granddad, he used to, which I only found out of my brother recently, he used to be, uh, he used to play the piano really, really good. Apparently, he couldn't read music, but if he heard the song once, the tune, he, he remembered it instantly and he could play it on the piano, which is a big gift, I think. Well, he used to play the banjo, 
Anyway, Stuart's found this banjo that my mum would kept, that, that my granddad's. So he saved that for me, so I'm going to get this old banjo. I've already got a banjo here that I had as a kid, but I could never play it. That I had as a kid. The, springs, the strings have gone on it. So I might show that in, a, in an older video. But I'm, the banjo's coming. Now, i tell you what's interesting. Now, I don't know if any of you know this, right? I know some of you will, but some of you won't, and it's interesting. He's also got a lot of old photos from the old days. And there's a lot of photos like my uncle Harold and then a lot of photos of my grandma and my granddad. Anyway, some of the photos are black and white and then there's some of the photos that's colour, but they're like a bland colour. And I said to Stuart, he showed me a couple and he said, have a look at that, what do you think? So he showed me on the phone and I'm looking at it, well, on my pad, I'm looking at it and I said, that's like a bland colour, how come that is? He said, well, in the old days, they were black and white, and then before colour came out properly, they used to take the photo in black and white, and they had these special colouring pens that they had, and they used to put colour by pet colouring in all the back, the photo with colours, these special colours, so it looked like it was a, a really good quality colour photo. And I said, never. He says, oh, I did, did that in the old days before actual colour photos came out. They used to colour them in. And I thought that were amazing. So I'm looking forward to that. And I tell you what he's also done. Now, obviously, when I was a kid, there were no computers or anything like that. So I'm old, old school where that is concerned. All these young generation have always had a computer or a phone at hand. There were nothing like that when I were a kid. And... Back in the old days, everyone used to write to each other. So everyone write a letter and post it and all that. Well, apparently our stewards found some old letters that my grandma and my granddad used to write to each other when they were courting. That's an old word, isn't it? Courting. I still say that, courting. When they were courting. So he saved me a couple of them. So I've got like the handwriting and writing. I can't wait to read the letters. I'm so looking forward to that. It'd be brilliant. And another thing he's got me. Now all these things, apart from the letters, because I don't want to show them because it's not fair that. But I'm going to show the shaver and the cigarette thing in a future video when I get them on the banjo to show you. Because it's really interesting all the stuff, I think. And what he's also got is the Auntie Alice. Now, when I was growing up, the, in the old days, then, if you were friends of the family, you was an auntie or an older, like, friends of your parents, then, who weren't related, but they were still called auntie and uncle. That's what we're, it was like in the old days. Everyone was auntie and uncle to you. Well, I had an, an auntie called Auntie Alice. Now, Auntie Alice was like my auntie, because it was the only relation I had that was out older when I was little, because that's all there was for me. And she was real Alice Stone, she were called. And she she was a really, really beautiful older lady. And she was really, really kind to me. And I've mentioned before that I used to go around and she used to do baking all week just for when I came round. And then she used to have them old fashioned cake trays, you know that carousel thing. She used to have lots of little buns and cakes on for me. And she used to let me have love them. And she used to say to me, Mum, because I was born hyperactive. So I was like Isaac Hatt if I had any sugary stuff. So she used to say to my mum, because my mum were very strict on my diet. So she used to say, can I, can I really have a cake? And she said, just the one Alice, just the one. So I'd have, I'd have my cake and I'd sit there right good because I know if I were good she'd ask, ask my mum again. So she said, come on now Heather, because my mum's name was Heather. Come on Heather, I want him to have another, he's been a good lad. Oh, I don't know Alice, she used to say. And then Alice would start nattering at her, and my aunt Alice would start nattering at her. And then we would say, all right, all right, just one more. So I'd get another one. And what she gave me when I was little was, because we used to play dominoes, me and my grand, me, Auntie Alice. And I've, she gave me an old tin with these old fashioned domino, black dominoes in. Really old fashioned, they were about that thick, they were thick dominoes. Anyway, Stuart says he's found them and he's going to send them up for me as well. So I can't wait, honestly. I'm looking forward to it all. It's going to be really, really good. Now, I hope I've not bored you. I hope I've not bored you. Now, I said in the last video that we're going to do a new segment called Question of the Day. 
okay so how it works is I'll I'll put a question towards with a couple of options if you want to option A, B, C or whatever and then if you feel that you want to answer it then if you put co in the comment comment section it might get people talking to each other and it'd be good for the channel because it's interaction rate and it helped my channel to grow because the YouTube algorithm sees it so if you fancy answering please do that in the comments below and I'll ask you the questions are you ready right these are the questions I'm holding my pad up here so I can read them to you right do you have any experience with off-grid technologies e.g. solar panels, rainwater harvesting or composting, toilets, right? So if there's anything you'd like to answer on that, that's question of the day. The next one is, what resources would you find most helpful in preparing to live off-grid? So the choices are either online courses or tutorials, books, workshops and hands-on training, communities, and support groups or other right so if you feel like answering them or putting a reply please do that be really really grateful now before I go if you're new to the channel if you could press the subscribe button please do that for me it helps my channel grow the channel's been growing pretty well lately so if you could keep it if I can keep it going it'd be great so if you're new to the channel if you press subscribe for me if you've been watching the channel before and you've enjoyed the videos but you haven't sub 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 that, do you know what, that's one word I always struggle with subscribe then please do so it's totally free to subscribe it will not cost you a penny hitting that button all it does is it helps me the youtube algorithm and it really does help me to support the channel also if you could put the thumbs up in this video please do so and if you enjoyed the video and you want to add any comments or answer question of the days then if you could put comments below that'd be great as well i really would appreciate it if you did the comments now if anybody's interested in joining our patreon channel uh, it's an independent channel, it's £2 a month and if all money raised goes back into the channel there's a link in the description below, also you might see a link pop up in the top corner as well uh, like I say all money goes back into the channel and it really helps to support us to buy building materials Not the money does not go in my back pocket, I assure you that it really does go on buying equipment much needed equipment as well to be honest with you and the videos that are in it there's videos in it photos in it there's 400 odd videos and photos in it at the moment as it is so if you're interested plus you get a seven day free trial at the moment as well so all information is in the description below and the link seven day free trial so check it out Now listen, I will see you all next week back down at the cabin. And don't ever forget, don't ever forget, dinky-doo, stay safe, stay well. See you next week back down at the cabin.